Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Adam. Here we talk about investing and making money and making your money work for you. So if you do like what you see and you like my channel, please be sure to give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. So today we're going to be talking about Hillion and there's a big day coming for Hillion tomorrow. They're announcing their quarterly results, their first ever filing uh, since the company IPO'd about a month ago. And this will determine if we're just looking at the stock price sorry, excuse me, if you're looking at the stock price right now, whether it pushes past the 20 day moving resistance at around like $24 um, or sells off and goes back down to around the $18 price point, right? And we've already seen this after it IPO'd, the company shot up um, to around $31 and then sold off at, and the resistance was around $18 as we see here. And it went on a huge tear uh, up to over $55. And now it's it went back down um, and again, we found resistance at around the $18 price point right here a couple weeks ago or about a week ago. And now it's been on uh, a movement upwards, right? So of course, I'm a Helion shareholder. Uh, I think my average cost basis was around um, $24. And I'm very excited to see what they announced today. And there's a lot of talk uh, on Yahoo Finance, uh, a lot of hype on this company. And it definitely is a speculative play. Uh, and a lot of predictions being made saying that if they do not get a contract by tomorrow, Helion stock price could uh, definitely take a beating, right? And I definitely think that may be the case, but I do think I really like what they're doing. Uh, and it's a very niche market, right? The reason why I like Helion is because it delivers electrified powertrain solutions, right? If we're looking at their sort of main products, there's the Hypertruck ERX, which is a fully electric version, uh, and then the hybrid electric, right? And... Um, I really, really like this quote. I think it says it all where it says Hylion's tech tackles one of the biggest pain points of the, for the logistics and tra transportation industry at a lower emissions without having to fully replace all existing assets and infrastructure. Um, a move that is cost prohibitive for many companies, right? If you're not Walmart, if you're not Amazon, uh, stuff like that. The ERX solution transforms existing fleets and delivers the desired efficiency impact zero or even negative emissions with significant reduced operating costs over time, right? So again, that's the main bold thesis around uh, Hillion, right? Is that you do actually don't need to replace all your trucks. Um, if you don't have the money for it, you can actually transform it and do this electrified powertrain solution, which is uh, more cost effective, uh, can, can even lead to zero or even negative emissions, right? So um, there's again, a lot of speculation around Helion, but again, one of the main things I like, uh, which I, I want to try to take a stab at this article and see why I disagree with this and why I actually do think that Helion is uh, a long-term play. Um, sure it's spec, but I think it has a lot more benefit than this article here takes on, right? So, uh, it's saying that it's been a little over a month since Helion became a public company through its merger, SPAC merger with Tortoise Acquisition Corp. And then since then, it's been on a major downturn with Helion stock losing half its value through November 5th, right? And I mean, that's definitely the case. Um, sorry, is that, that? That's definitely the case, right? It went from like, you know, $55 all the way down to like 18. So definitely lost over half its value. But again, uh, this is just like all speculation, right? It's very common, especially nowadays with a company that just comes out with, uh, you know, through a SPAC, investors get hyped up and it just like pushes the stock price to insane heights and then goes off to sell on the lows, right? Um, and so there's nothing wrong there. Uh, and again, let's look at their future projections as well as the demand for the market for these products. So Helion expects to sell 20 units of, a, of its hybrid electric powertrain in 2020, generating approximately 1 million revenue. In 2021, it expects to sell 300 hybrid electric units, generating 8 million in sales. And then in 2022, it projects to um, sell 4,100 hybrid electric units and 2,500 of its ERX electric trucks for 344 million in annual revenue and then by 2024 uh, it expects its sales to top two billion dollars so these are you know again pretty crazy numbers uh, and we'll have to see whether or not they're early on on track on generating their 2020 20 figures um and again i'll go through that but i think it is exciting with the growth of course they may not make this growth but it's nice to see uh, that these are their expectations, right? And we'll see if they have any contracts for their ERX or uh, electric powertrain, right? And of course, um, let's see what the market opportunity is, right? They project that the global market opportunity for a product is 800 billion, 
based on research, right? And then uh, that active class eight commercial vehicles, which are basically semi trucks will grow by approximately 4.5% annually from 2020 to 2024, right? So again, there is a huge demand or there's a huge market opportunity, uh, as we can see, 800 billion, that's like 200 short of 1 trillion. Um, however, what this, what this uh, article is saying is that, you know, Helion is very speculative, right? And if you want a safer bet, just invest in Tesla, right? So for example, uh, he says, the problem that I see with this example is that it assumes Tesla will not make any progress on his truck while Helion sails smoothly to the finish line. And what they're referring to here is that uh, Helion points out in its investor presentation that its Hypertruck ERX will have a range of 1,300 miles, 2.6 times the range of Tesla's heavy-duty truck and almost double Nikola's uh, truck. Well, I mean, Nikola, I mean, uh, I, I don't even know if I should comment on Nikola because um, there's they're getting investigated by the SEC while Trevor Mel Milton stepped down uh, and they're partnering with GM or supposedly partnering with GM. I believe anyone can back out of the deal before December 3rd. So I don't, I'm not really sure if Nikola is even in the equation right here to be delivering trucks anytime, right? So again, first of all, Helion actually has a proven product that's out on the market right now, right? And Tesla, uh, I mean, Tesla is just an absolute beast, right? So, um, okay, sure, Tesla is going to expand the range, right? But, uh, you know, what if you're not a company like Walmart or Amazon who can afford Tesla, Tesla's semi-trucks, right? So here they're, they, they go on to argue that Tesla recently got an order for 130 Tesla semis from Walmart's Canadian operations. Um, they said on September 29th. So the moves come on the heels of Walmart Canada announcing a major 3.5 billion investment over the next five years aimed to generate significant growth in the business and is aligned with Walmart's global goal to target zero emissions by 2040, right? Um, Tesla is looking at 20 million in revenue. Again, this is just a small fraction of the whole semi-truck business and um, the transportation sector, right? And same thing with something like an Amazon, they're going green and they're investing in uh, companies like Tesla. However, what about all those companies that can't afford a Tesla semi-truck right now, right? Uh, there are millions of companies that are involved in the transportation sector that need a solution right now to electrify um, and, and go to zero emissions. But again, they can't afford these huge uh, orders for Tesla semis, like they're not a Walmart, they're not a Amazon. So what I think is that there's still going to be significant uh, market for Helion and its electrified products, right? And right here, it's saying that Helion only needs to capture a quarter of 1% of the global market for class A commercial vehicles to reach its 2 billion projection by 2024, right? And that's not so surprising to uh, think about is that, yeah, you know, there's still a huge market, even if some of the big dogs um, will get the vast majority of the Tesla semis, for example, right? Uh, there's still a huge market for Helion products. And this is why I believe in Helion. This is why I really hope that they come out tomorrow. And again, we'll have to see what their results are. But even if they don't have uh, incredible results just yet, again, they're still a growing company. Of course, this is more of a speculative play but I do believe in their products. And um, again, like I said, if we're looking at the chart, this could be, again, a push to back down to $18, a huge sell-off, or again, another gain to push past the resistance at around $24, right? Um, and finally, if we're looking at their relative strength index, it's around, you know, 43 right now. So pretty much going nearing towards oversold territory but not quite yet, but definitely not in overbought territory. And if we look at the MACD, it's still negative, but it's the trend reverses and it's moving upwards, which means that the stock price should continue to go upwards as the MACD uh, goes above zero, hopefully in the near future. But again, tomorrow will definitely determine all of that and the technicals could get thrown out the window. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for you today. I hope you did enjoy this video. Again, I'm bullish on um, Hillion long term. And uh, yeah, we'll have to see the results that come out tomorrow. But yeah, take care, guys. I hope you have a fantastic day.